Hallelujah, Lord. Did the Lord speak to you? Always remember, God speaks for action. Not for your consideration. <laughs> God never suggests, He commands. He commands. Every time God brings His people and speaks, that shows that He still believes you. He still loves you. The Bible says in Second Chronicles, God had compassion on you and sent His messengers to you. Every time when a man of God or a woman of God stand before you, that's a message I have compassion on you, I still speak to you. You have only one choice. Either you say, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord. <laughs> or, no Lord, no Lord, no, no Lord. <laughs> there is nothing more that you and I can do. Remember God doesn't waste his time, our time and your time. You are here not by accident. It's God's eternal plan. Hallelujah. Wow, what a presence of the Holy Spirit this evening. How many of you feel him now? Wow, whether you feel him or not, he is here. When he is here, anything can happen. In his presence, mountains shall melt like wax. In his presence, mountains. What's that mountain that's standing before you? <laughs> What's that? It's melting <laughs> in his presence. Already it started melting. <laughs> Just say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I am in your presence. All the mountains that's hindering, hindering me is melting all ready. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I tell you, when God is here, if one person feel him, all can feel Are you here? If you don't feel, it doesn't mean he bypassed you. <laughs> you didn't know how to open up your spirit. That's why the Lord brought you here. He has a plan for you. He will not bypass you. <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> My wife was talking about the revival. How your housewife brought such a revival all over the nation. I tell you, beloved, listen, if God has done it through one person, that means he's willing to do everyone. Imagine if she was praying for outpouring. <laughs> <laughs> she understood that the rivers are in her spirit. She didn't wait. She released it. And things happen. Every revival history, if you see, somebody opened up their spirits. <laughs> and from them, the rivers went and it changed the nation. 
That's what yesterday I was speaking about. Uh, Wigglesworth, am I, did, am I pronouncing correctly? <laughs> he said, when I go to a meeting, if God doesn't move there, I move him. <laughs> See the audacity of the faith. <laughs> you and I are waiting. One day, one day. <laughs> God will move one day. The move of God. The move of God. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> it's not God is not, doesn't want to move. <laughs> but the problem is he wants, he must move through his body. My head cannot move. This head needs a body to move. <laughs> So you think you are waiting for the revival, but the fact is he is waiting for the body to move on. You think you are waiting for God's visitation for a long time. <laughs> he says, <laughs> the greatest visitation I, have, I can do it is, my wife was talking about coming to India from Germany and an altar, bound in the altar. Imagine the greatest visitation ever happened in the world. The creator of heaven and earth became a man, came into this dirty world and walked for 333 years. Are you not happy with that visitation? What more visitation? <laughs> now God doesn't come visit and go. He reminds he made you as his home. The home changed. If you see the whole Bible, he didn't have homes. He has to pick up a thorn bush, come there, talk to people, come, went, went back to heaven because no home was made for him. Then he said, build me a tabernacle and do this, 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 this. And in the holy of holies, my glory shall be there. Then from there, he shifted to Solomon's temple. From there, in a way, it became his headquarters. It became his home. From there, he was able to do something in the world. Are you receiving, please? You know what I am going to do today? Today I am going to inaugurate <laughs> the house of God to function. Today I am going to open up your spirit that Jesus in you comes out of you, moves around. You talk about, nobody recognizes me. Nobody recognizes me. I tell you, when I started my ministry, who ever recognized me? <laughs> I was from a poor house. My father, mother are humble teachers. We were nine children. The eldest son. In India, the eldest son is like a father. He has to take care of the entire family from a Lutheran church. I didn't know there is any other church under heaven <laughs> exists. But one thing I have understood, the Bible says, when Jesus came out of the boat, people recognized him and ran to all the villages and town, brought the sick people to him. Can I tell you good news? When he comes out of your spirit, people will recognize you. What's miracle? What's miracle? Miracle is nothing but Jesus from my spirit comes out. That's miracle. 